Hello guys, how are you doing today? Today we are, we are going to introduce the stiffness method which is also called displacement method and specifically we will be discussing the one of them in this video slope deflection deflection method that's what we are covering today in the previous uh, chapter or in the previous topics that we were dealing with we talk about the force method and the force method uses compatibility the force method uses compatibility deformation equations <coughs> in order to find the redundant forces in the system. The method of the displacement is the opposite of this, is the inverse of this. For the method of the displacement 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 method what we do is that we use the equations of equilibrium of the structure in order to find the redundant in this case was redundant forces and moments in this case we are going to find the redundant displacements or the formations And then all the forces are going to be calculated at moments in terms of these redundant deformation. But this is just a purely theoretically background of what this is done and how it's done. This method was originally uh, it was originally studied, let's say, by Heinrich Manderla. And I know you're gonna know you're gonna uh, this one you're gonna know who the person is Otto Mohr because he's the the Mohr circle remember this was the guy and they were using this for uh, studying secondary stresses especially in trusses. But it was reinvented or reimagined, let's say, by George Money in 1915. Let's say 1915-ish, because I'm not so sure about uh, this 1915. And for with applications to beams static indeterminate beams and statically indeterminate frames that's what happened here so this, uh, this method has several limitations but this is very very nice method it's, uh, it takes into account only bending so shear, axial, torsion are not using, are not used for this. They say they are negligible. This method is precursor with a slow defla uh, moment distribution. Next method that we're going to be covering it will be the precursor of uh, the computerized. stiffness matrix method and basically what this method do is that uh, or does relates the moments at the end of members 
with rotations and deflections. Hence, slope deflection method. Well, for a general case, if we're going to be talking about a general case, let's say, let's focus here on this beam. Any, any type of beam, any type of support. Let's say this was here, this was here, but now it dropped to this point, and then this dropped to this point, and this was here, and this was here. I don't know. Let's say that the original condition of this was something like that. And of course, it has a load, which I put it rectangular, but anyway, it's any, any load. that changes in terms of x and we're going to have forces and we're going to have any type of forces applied there, forces, moments, we're going to have settlements in the supports, that's what we have, that's what I put these supports here and the deflected shape of something like this, of course this is super 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 exaggerated but it will be something like this and then here it will go walk at and then here it will go like this and then it will go like that I don't know something like that could be the deflected shape of this element and if we study this part in particular let's say that this is a I don't know a and this is B and I don't care about the rest but if you just select this little portion of that beam over there and we put the load on top of that and within the span we have to assume that EI is constant otherwise we have to make another another section in that part let's say this is the end A this is the end B and of course when we do this type of simplifications then we're gonna have here the shear at the point A and we're going to have the shear here at the point B and then you're going to have a moment and you're going to have a moment in this part but at the same time if you look at this is the, the on the form shape and this is the deflected shape somehow the deflected shape here these moments and these forces can be expressed in terms of this rotation rotation at the point A or this rotation rotation at the point B as well as this relative displacement between the point A and the point B and also another factor that is very important because it makes the relation with that uh, that relative displacement is this term which is called psi and, and psi is a small small angular uh, deformation of the core meaning the original position versus the end position a straight line and it's going to be that, that delta divided by L uh, because the tangent in reality the tangent of that angle is going to be this divided by that because the angle is small then we can infer that this is uh, what is going to happen to that so I don't want to I don't want to go in detail because now we have to start doing summation of moments compatibility equations and after like two or three or four pages of derivations then these guys came with some formulas in order to uh, relate all of these deformations and deflections over there.
and the formulas are as follow. There are only three formulas, so there are not that many. And with those formulas, we can basically solve any case. First, in the case of continuous frames, a uh, continuous spans, meaning if you have something like this, this is considered continuous. This is considered continuous. The, and this is the point A and this is the point B, or this is the point A and this is the point B here. Then you have the moment AB, the moment at this end is going to be equal to 2EI divided by L multiplied by 2 times rotation at A plus rotation at B minus 3 times that angular deformation or that core deformation psi plus the fixed end moment at of AB. And the moment BA, it will be 2EI over L times the formation of A plus 2 times the formation of B minus 3 times the psi plus the fixed end moment uh, BA. This is for the case of continuous moment, places where you have moment in both ends. But you can have also places where you have one uh, one of the ends uh, is a pin and the other end is continuous. So basically I'm talking about this span here. And if you talk about this span, and this is A and this is B, the moment at AB is zero because this is a, a pin, but the moment BA then that will be 3 times EI over L. This is a modified, this is what is called a modified equation for this situation, times the rotation at B minus Psi plus the fixed end moment BA minus the fixed end moment AB divided by 2. So these two are the equations, the normal equation, and this is the modified equation. The fixed moments, the fixed moments are those moments for the particular type of loading condition. Uh, I'm looking for as the, the this will behave is it's just fixed and fixed like that. And you can find that in the back cover of basically every single book. A structural analysis book. Those are the fixed end moments here. This is what it refers to. Uh, so, there are several conventions, and depending on the textbook that you are working with, uh, they change the conventions. I would like to keep the conventions like follows. So, for a moment, and rotation, everything that is counterclockwise I'm going to consider it positive. Because I'm used to this, you know, counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. Meaning, if you have a rotation that is measured in this direction, that will be a positive angle. And if you have a rotation that is measured in this other direction, that would be negative. Because it's like that. Same thing with the moment. Same thing with psi. Same convention applied to psi, same convention applied to that. If you have, a, let's say that you have a differential between both supports. If originally it was like that, and now we are talking like that, and I have to calculate the this angle, this psi, which is delta over L, and this is L, that will be negative. But if you have something like that, going like that, then that will be positive. So that will be negative, and that will be positive. And I don't know. So these are the basic conventions, and I know this is very abstract and very general, but I don't want to go into the details. I don't want to do a 
tons of derivations that really I don't think you are interested. I'm not interested. I, I want to use the tools and I'm an academician. So I guess that you are less interested than I am. So let's do some problems. I'm going to solve like several problems. I'm going to solve like three beams and a couple of frames. And hopefully with that, you're going to get a good insight on what this method is, which is really simple, by the way. Keep watching, guys. Let's see the first video with the same, the first example.